I'm not an equity security. And so we had to go to the Supreme Court to define whether or not they needed to register with the SEC. And you'll also notice one of the things about these laws. Um, this one is not as rewritten. But oftentimes, especially in finance or technology, you'll, think, you'll see that the, uh, the terms and concepts change over time. So this act was written back in 1934. There was no such thing as a swap or a swaption or an exploding, uh, uh, explode, uh, an exploding put call or something like that, some of these exotic derivatives. So what some of the things they'll do is they'll go back and they'll change the wording in the enabling legislation just so the definitions of the terms can keep up with the times. Right. Here on the next slide, we have an overview of who some of the regulators are. I'll just run through these quickly. Um, uh, we have across the top row, obviously, the three major branches of the U.S. government, um, the White House on the left, Congress in the middle, and the Supreme Court on the right. Uh, one of the things you all might be asking, I know we have uh, folks here from Singapore, we've had people from other countries around the world, one of the questions we get is, isn't this a little U.S.-centric? Uh, well, Americans who are widely known for our arrogance um, also have, I think, a justifiable um, view of U.S. kind of sets the pace as far as securities regulations go. Um, obviously, the English have had a lot of experience with this as well. Uh, the FSA or the Financial Services Administration has its own uh, code of regulations. Um, clearly, if you take a look at marketplaces in general, the Dutch go back uh, many more years before we do. New York was founded by the Dutch. It's one of the reasons why we are such traders here in New York City. Um, and of course, there's the, when you talk about bubbles, I mean, there was the stock market bubble in 2000. There was a tulip bubble uh, back, I think, in the 1600s in, in, uh, in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, so we are not uh, the oldest marketplace. We are not the only marketplace. We are and remain the largest marketplace. Uh, there's more capital formation in the U.S. than anywhere else, um, even uh, despite the uh, impact of Sarbanes-Oxley. Uh, there are three major marketplaces around the world. There's New York, London, and Hong Kong. Uh, but the U.S., as far as securities regulations go, is still really the pace setter, and the, the rest of the world looks to us. So when we teach uh, security regulation, we teach the U.S. system, and that's, I think, still pretty much the standard uh, for global regulation. So across the top, you have the three major branches of the U.S. government. Congress, <coughs> Pat, is, uh, uh, as you know, is, is charged with passing laws. The White House is uh, charged with implementing those laws, and the Supreme Court, or the judiciary, is therefore interpreting the laws if there's a, a question about interpretation. Underneath here, going across, you'll see some of the different agencies and sub, uh, sub branches of government that are involved. Uh, the Treasury is the uh, cabinet um, uh, position in the White House, which is involved with securities matters. Um, if you take a look under Congress, you have two different committees, one on the House and the Senate side, which specialize in securities matters. On the, uh, on the Senate side, you have the Banking Committee, uh, also the Finance Committee will sometimes get involved there uh, with uh, SEC matters. And on the House side is the Committee on Financial Services. Uh, obviously, the Supreme Court, it comes down to the Supreme Court, the 12 Court of Appeals, and about 100 judicial districts, and things will move from the bottom up. Um, underneath here, going across, we obviously have the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, is the agency which is most responsible uh, for policing uh, the, the uh, uh, securities markets in the United States. Uh, in the United States, as you know, we have a dual form of government. We have the federal government and the state government. Because New York is such a marketplace uh, and such a you know, homegrown industry, uh, the New York Attorney General does get uh, particularly involved in uh, matters of, uh, of uh, regulation of Wall Street. So you will recall that now Governor and then Attorney General Elliot Spitzer uh, got involved in cracking down on uh, analysts uh, that were offering favorable opinions to get banking business. Uh, that was a, an effort that was run by the Attorney General's office, and the SEC came on later uh, on that uh, final judgment. Uh, but in this case, yes, you do have a big involvement by the New York Attorney General's office, and the state laws collectively are generally referred to as blue sky laws. We'll talk about those in a moment. And then as I discussed underneath here, you have the Code of Federal Regulations, uh, which are the, the, the specific laws that are written either by the SEC or any other agency like the FAA or the FDA, 
uh, that's responsible for interpreting these broad laws, and then you have ultimately the U.S. Code, and the U.S. Code are very broad and general laws, like the Securities Act of 1933, that have to be interpreted. And so, uh, as we discussed, the Securities Act of 1933 or 34, I forget which it is, says you cannot uh, solicit unregistered shares. Well, it, you leave that then up to the SEC to interpret that for, okay, well, now how do we, they had radio at the time, right? So how do we interpret that for radio and newspapers, right? Then came television. So you have to interpret that law, which was passed before television for television. And now we have the internet, right? And so you start getting into things, well, can you use the internet for private equity if you have password protected pages? Okay? Now the SEC has not written a regulation on that, that I'm aware of anyways, but they have offered a guidance document. So the SEC will hold town meetings, they'll hold conferences, they'll get input, and then they'll have someone write a guidance document. And this will be an SEC guidance document. And after a while, an SEC guidance document becomes an SEC rule. And after a while, Congress reviews the rule and says, well, no, that's what, this is what we wanted, so we're going to pass a law. And now you've got to change the rules to comply with the law. So this is the way that it works. It's a very dynamic process, and it's supposed to take into account changes in technologies in the marketplace. Okay? I've also put up here on the next slide some of the self-regulatory organizations um, that have to do with the securities industry in the U.S. Uh, obviously, we have the marketplaces. Uh, like the New York Stock Exchange, uh, which is now merged with one of the European exchanges. Um, New York Stock Exchange has its own rules, okay? So when you're doing uh, securities transactions uh, on the New York Stock Exchange, you not only have to worry about the congressional laws, the SEC rules, you also have to worry about the New York Stock Exchange rules, okay? So you go from very broad on congressional legislation to narrower with SEC rules to very narrow with New York Stock Exchange rules. It'll also deal with things like trading rules, okay? Uh, we have the NASD, uh, which as you know is a uh, uh, is the parent organization of NASDAQ, uh, which is another of the marketplaces. Uh, many people consider NASDAQ to be an improvement on the New York Stock Exchange system of having humans on a trading floor calling out bids and asks. Uh, uh, NASD or NASDAQ still has humans involved, but generally they're talking to each other through telephones. And now we have ECMs, which are a further advancement, which are just sort of computers talking to each other without any humans involved, or humans have the input, but not as much of a, of a uh, participation in the trading. Um, but these NASD, they have their own rules as well. Um, and in order to do, in order to get what's called performance pay in the United States, even for private equity, you need to be part of the NASD. So the NASD, which is the parent organization that runs NASDAQ, is also a licensing body. Uh, so when I say that I have a Series 7, 24, 63, 86, and 87, those are the licenses that allow me to go up to a company and say, all right, um, if I raise you money, um, then I'll get to keep 5% of that. Okay? In order to do that, you need to be registered with the NASD. Okay? Uh, there are different interpretations of that. I wouldn't say that everyone agrees in that. And certainly it's not the case that everyone in this town that's getting a securities fee or a performance fee as part of the NESD is one of those rules which is often broken. Um, but as a general matter, uh, you do need to be part of the NESD. And if you go through the SEC website, you can see lots of securities actions where they have thrown people in jail and find them a lot of money uh, because they've taken performance fees uh, without being registered. Okay? And then uh, as far as um, other relevant what are called self-regulatory uh, organizations. There's FASB. FASB is the Financial Accounting Standards Board, and FASB is the one who sets up the accounting laws, the accounting rules, okay? So that's very important, obviously, because if you're going to have a numbers-based system, and particularly in public equity, we have a numbers-based system. A lot of trading now is done on a program basis, computers making decisions to buy or sell stocks without humans getting involved. So maybe they're off of market data, or, 